Hello and welcome back. Today's video, I'll be going into CyberArk EPM and how we can set up CyberArk Identity SAML authentication. So the objectives are, first we'll configure the EPM SAML authentication to work with CyberArk Identity. Once we get that working, I'm going to add in a step up authentication profile that you may choose to implement. And then finally, we'll configure the automatic user provisioning so that when users log on for the first time, their account is created in EPM. So with that done, I'll head over to the lab now and show you how it's done. So over on the lab, I've logged into the workstation and our goal today is to log into EPM via identity. I'll just show you what that looks like currently. So if I go to the EPM portal here and enter in our credentials, these are the credentials I was given when I set up this trial tenant. So we'll sign in and we're logged in. So we want to improve the security of this logon flow by setting up the SAML authentication with identity. So I'll head back over to Privilege Cloud. We'll go to the nine dots up here and go to Identity Administration. And we'll go to Core Services, then Roles here. I'm going to add a role and we'll give it a name of EPM Administrators. We'll hit Save and we'll go to the Members tab. And for now, I'll just add in my account. We add and save. So the next step is to set up a policy and an authentication policy. I'm going to go to policies in my lab here, and I'm going to use the existing Privileged Cloud policy. You may want to set up a separate policy for EPM administrators, but for my environment, uh, I'm, going to I'm going to consider them uh, EPM administrators the same as Privileged Cloud um, administrators and users. So we simply need to hit Add here and type in EPM administrators. And we'll save that. Our next step is to go to Apps and Widgets and then Web Apps. And then we'll click on Add Web Apps. We'll search for EPM and we'll click add. We'll hit yes to this, and then click close. We'll then go to the trust tab, and expand out this IDP service certificate, and we'll click on download. If we go to our downloads directory, we can see this file here that we just downloaded. At the moment, this is saved as a base64 format. So what we need to do is open this up and go to the details tab and then go copy to file. And what we want to do is save it as a DER encoded format. So we'll hit next. We'll put this in the same location. We'll save that. And we'll click finish and click OK, and there's our cert that we'll use later on. Next, I'll open up a notepad file, and we'll document some of the identity provider configuration. So we'll, exp we'll expand this one out. I'll just copy this name here. This is the RDP issuer URL, and we need to copy this URL for later on. So we'll grab that. We also need the RDP single sign-on URL, and its value. The RDP logout URL. Copy that. And that's all we need for now. So if I head back over to the EPM portal here, and we'll click on administration. and then go to SAML integration. So we'll scroll down here and copy the issuer URL, the single sign-on URL, and the logout URL. I'll just minimize that and maximize this so we can see better. We'll grab our service certificate and this is the DER encoded X509 format that we converted earlier. And 
And for the organization identifier, we'll put in our privilege cloud subdomain. And for the logout URL, we'll just simply redirect the user back to the privilege cloud URL, which in my case is this URL. This last setting, lock EPM login URL for all users, is currently set to none. We're going to set this to this setting here, all users beside admin account. And what that means is SAML will work for both the identity as well as the old username and password format. We set this setting temporarily, just in case we've done something wrong in the configuration, we can log in with our username and password. Once we're happy with the EPM configuration, we'll select this later on in the video. So for now, I'll click save. And we now need to download the configuration XML that we'll use in the identity configuration. So we'll hit download that. And that's in our downloads directory. If I head back over to the identity administration, We'll scroll down here and configure the service provider configuration. Under metadata, we'll simply choose a file that we downloaded earlier, and here's the CyberArk epm.xml we just downloaded before. We'll click Save, and then we'll go to the Permissions tab here, and we'll click on Add, and we'll search for EPM Administrators. We'll select that. And that's the role we created earlier in the video. We'd add on that. If we scroll down to the bottom, we've got the EPM administrators here. We need to ensure that the run is selected as well as automatically deploy permissions. That's all we need. So we'll click on save. Next, we'll head over to the account mapping tab here. And for the directory service field, we're going to use user principal name. We'll click Save. We're now ready to test this. The way that I'll do that is I'll open up an incognito window. We'll log into Privilege Cloud. Put in our password and we'll enter in our code. Now that we're logged in, I'll go over to the application switcher here and go to the identity user portal. And then we'll see that we've got a new item here, the Subrack Endpoint Privilege Management. If I just click on that, and there we are, it's used single sign on to log into EPM. I can now go to administration and then SAML configuration. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we can now select this setting here uh, to, for all users. So this will mean that I can no longer use my username and password to log into EPM. I'll save that. And if I log out, it will redirect back to Privilege Cloud as expected. But what I want to test is going directly to the EPM portal here. and providing my original username and password. If I do that, as you can see here, we've got an error, it's not successful, and that's because we've changed that setting. So back in the user portal, the only way I can log into EPM now as an administrator is by clicking on this icon here. Back in identity, there are extra steps we can do to improve security. This step is obviously optional, but in my lab, I'll just show you what you can do. If we head over to policy, and then in this section here, you can do lots of things to uh, create conditions when a user is allowed to log into EPM. I'm just going to do a simple step up authentication. So at the moment, they're always allowed, assuming the user is logged into identity uh, to get in, to log on to EPM. I'm going to add a new profile, and we'll call this EPM step up auth profile. And I want to make it relatively easy for the users to step up their authentication. I don't want them to provide their password. All I want to do is let them step up whichever method they prefer. So I'm going to select mobile authenticator 
one time password client and task keys in this example. It's also important to scroll down to the bottom here and change this challenge pass through to no pass through. Uh, what that will mean is uh, if you don't select this, uh, sometimes they'll be allowed straight onto EPM without that step up. You may choose to use a, a smaller or larger value, value but, for, but for demonstration purposes, I'll, I'll select no pass through and then select OK, and then I'll save that. I'll just close this um, incognito session. Now start a new incognito session. And we'll go to the Privileged Cloud Portal. We'll log in as our user. Password and our MFA code. So I head over to the application switcher, go to Identity User Portal, and we'll click on the EPM portal here. And here will ask us to put in our one-time password client. And there we are, we're logged in. And that's how you could set up a step up authentication to log into the EPM portal. At the moment, I'm able to log into EPM because I'm using an account that was already existing in EPM as it was the initial administrator account for EPM. If we go back to identity administration, and if we go and add another user under roles, EPM administrators and members here, if I add in, say, John here, so I've added John, and we hit save. If I open up a new incognito session, and log into CyberArk. We'll head to the application switcher, go to the identity user portal. John's got this icon to log into EPM. We'll provide the step up authentication. And we get this error. This was expected because we haven't set up the user provisioning. I'll just close this session. And we'll head back to EPM. And we'll click on administration. Go to SAML integration. And down the bottom here, we'll see the SAML user provisioning. And we'll click on create SAML attribute value. In my environment, I've only got one set. I'm just going to select this one here and generate SAML attribute value. I'll just copy that to clipboard and put that in a new netpad. And we can hit cancel. And we also need to click on enable SAML user provisioning. If you don't do this, the automatic user provisioning will not work. Not work. We'll save that. And we'll head back to identity administration and go to web apps here, the CyberArk Endpoint Privilege Manager, and we'll go to SAML response. And down the bottom here, we can uh, create a script. So right now I'm following the documentation uh, that I'll provide the links to um, in the description, but we've basically got to send through the attribute with the EPM user binding. I did find on the community that someone's made a uh, a script here that might be useful for some environments where you've got multiple sets and different groups that you want to do. I don't need to do that in my environment, but we basically need to uh, use this format here to uh, set the set attribute. Um, there's lots of ways you can do it, but in this lab, we'll do it this way. So simply, I just put this in here and I'm just going to replace what this string here is. So when we log into uh, EPM, it's going to send this attribute of this string here, which will tell uh, EPM to grant that user as an admin rights to that uh, particular set. So we'll just copy that and go back to the identity administration here, paste that in here, and we'll hit save.
So now that that's saved, we'll test it. So let's open up a new incognito. We'll log in as John. We'll go to the application switcher to the identity user portal and we'll log into EPM. Do our step up. And John's logged in. So John is now a set administrator for the default set that's in this tenant. Uh, so John will have a different view to the Brad account because uh, of the permissions. If we head back to the EPM portal as Brad here and go to account management, we can see that the set administrators are John and Brad here, but the account administrators is just Brad. Unfortunately, we can't automatically provision account administrators, only set administrators. So we could simply allow John to be an account administrator by editing the John account and simply ticking this account administrator. We'll hit finish. Now John's a now John is an account administrator. And if I head back to John's session, we'll close this tab here, reopen EPM, do a step up. And now John is a full administrator in this EPM tenant. And I'll finish the video here. Uh, today we have configured EPM SAML authentication via CyberArk Identity. We have then added in the step up authentication uh, to improve security. And then finally, I configured the automatic user provisioning so that onboarding uh, is much easier. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.